If you're a parent, teacher, or school leader, and you're sick and tired of the frustration, anger, and unfair treatment of children at high risk in our public schools, then perhaps it's time for all of us to do something about it. In this podcast, Dr. Amitra Berry brings you tips, tools, strategies, and tactics to build successful solutions while touching, moving, and inspiring all of us to transform our schools so that every child thrives. Here's your host, Dr. Berry. Welcome back, Equity Warriors. Thanks for tuning in to another episode focused on the intersection of education and politics here on the 3E Podcast. You know, they say if you hang around education long enough, the things that have fallen out of favor will come right back around, or as I used to say, as the pendulum swings. So um, last episode, I started talking about assessment of literacy and I'm just not quite ready to get off my soapbox on that one yet. So I want to take a look at what's happening with the science of reading in 2024, this time on the political side. So let's see if your state is represented. In Massachusetts, there's a governor. The governor has a proposal for a five-year literacy plan about K-3 reading instruction aligned with evidence-based practices. She's proposed a budget of $30 million dollars putting money behind what you're putting out there, and a mandate that teacher prep programs teach evidence-based instructional programs or instructional approaches. The only challenge I have with that, you know, first, kudos, awesome, putting money behind it, focused on K-3, all of this is good stuff. Teacher prep programs, having to teach evidence-based instructional approaches, I love it because one of the challenges that I've seen is that The university system teaches what they teach, and it does not always connect to the needs of the learners in those communities. So my only other issue or challenge really is with the language evidence-based versus validated. Now, maybe it's just their wording. My concern there, though, is that evidence-based can lower the bar for content providers. You know, which evidence are we looking at? Which learners were included in the research that says that we have evidence that this works with which children. I've often talked about and written about, you know, education being much more like medicine, where we would conduct things like double blind studies. We'd make sure that every demographic was represented to get evidence that something works for every child, or at the very least, saying that the evidence that we have for the effectiveness of this, this approach or, or this curriculum is only with this group of children, which may not be your group of children. That's Massachusetts. In New York, another governor proposal, back to basics in literacy. This time it's PK3, evidence-based and scientifically based reading. So a little bit more in there. It's wrapped around a culturally responsive framework. Y'all know how I feel about culturally responsive uh, instruction. Very happy to see that. And this budget has put $10 million into professional learning to cover 20,000 teachers and training them on the science of reading by July of this year. So moving fast and very focused. Now, This proposal is 154 pages, and I did not read all 154, but I did read enough, and the good stuff starts on page 52. I'll just say, I like what New York is proposing, or I love New York, maybe. In Maryland, in the coming 2024-25 school year, every single school must be aligned with the science of reading, and Maryland, too, has gone further. They have partnered with higher ed, where teacher pre- teacher prep programs, I don't know why I always have trouble saying, teacher prep programs must use evidence-based methods in their instruction. Again, I love it. This is what should be happening. Our teacher colleges should be preparing our teachers to teach the children that are in our schools. It should be focused on the science of reading, and they should be looking at evidence that what they are going to use will work with the children that they are paid to provide instruction to. All right, then we got Indiana, 
Iowa and a couple of others I'm going to lump into one. They're all legislative bills. It means it's starting with their state legislators. And there are a number of these states that are bringing forward bills based on third grade retention. And I know I talked about that in the last episode, this idea that if the children aren't at grade level or can't pass the high stakes assessment at third grade, that they'll be retained in grade. Now, third grade retention, who do you think is disproportionately impacted by that? Black, Latino, Indigenous learners, especially those children who come to school speaking a language other than school English. And I've talked about sociocultural languages before. So not just our Latino children who speak Spanish as a primary language, but those who speak Chicano English, our Black learners who may speak African-American vernacular English, our Indigenous learners who come to school with a background in their tribal language. These children are disproportionately impacted. Now, retention sucks. I say do it right the first time. Why are we waiting until children fail in the third grade and then giving them intervention? We should be using scientifically validated approaches to instruction from kindergarten forward to make sure that every single child reads on time and on grade level. In 2023, I'm trying to not get off my soapbox, at least step down a level. In 2023, there were 17 states that implemented new laws around reading instruction, 17. And what I'm noticing in the legislation that's been passed over the last six years, there are 25 states that allow or require retention. 11 have no retention policy. In the third grade retention states, what I've noticed is that they don't require scientifically based and validated instruction. Again, creating a system that allows children to fail, and then blaming the child. So what should we do? You know what to do. First, you need to find out what the laws look like in your state. I have a link down in the notes to a really great tool from our friends over at Education Week, Ed Week, and that allows you to look up your state, the legislation, what it does, a little bit of an overview. So take a look at that and find out what's happening in your own backyard and then vote as if your life depended on it because our children's lives do. Attend a local school board meeting, ask about the reading instruction, ask about what's going on in your district, and then advocate through social media. Follow me across my channels, repost, like, like and share, important to share. And continue to join me every week. Connect with me on social. Use those links down in the notes. Send me your questions, topics, requests to info at askdrberry.com and I will answer your questions and bring you experts to help address those topics. Again, don't worry about the things you cannot change. Change the things you can no longer accept. And I'll see you next time. That's it for today's episode of the 3E Podcast. Head over to iTunes and subscribe to the show. One lucky listener every single week that posts a review on iTunes will win a chance in a grand prize drawing to win a $25,000 value private VIP day with Dr. Barry herself. Be sure to head over to 3epodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Dr. Barry's gift. Then join us on the next episode.